Today we're back with another Game of Thrones recap, this time on episode three, and it is for the Queen's Justice. The is the Queen's Justice. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about what happened in this episode. Yeah, so I think the Queen they're talking about, I guess they were talking about a couple Both, Queens. Yeah. Probably more Cersei, uh, but let's start with Daenerys, because that's where the episode starts out. Yeah, we start with Jon coming to uh, Dragonstone and encountering the dragons, because up until that point they were just hearsay, so he got a nice little introduction to them. <laughs> and Daenerys would not let this whole... Bend the knee. Yeah, thing go. Uh -uh. Seems like it's causing a little bit of problems, because he was like, I'm not here to do that at all. She's leaning the way of her father just a little bit with this, and it's a little concerning. I worry for our baby girl. Yeah, she had a monologue this episode, which I thought was pretty revealing of where she's currently at yes. as a character, where she's like, I did this. It was very I like depended on me. Yeah, yeah, and it was very much like, I am what's important. And I don't feel like that was necessarily always the driving force in those other moments that she mm -hmm. talked about. I feel like it was more her sense of justice and her sense of that the right thing to do and she's in a place where she can do that as their leader and she didn't really express that in that speech but in the end Daenerys agreed to help Jon mine the dragon glass and help him out with his quest to save the wall <laughs> so after Khaleesi and Jon meet up and have their discussions we move over to King's Landing where Euron is showing off his spoils from his naval battle and he's again pushing Cersei for the whole marriage thing which she tentatively accepts mm -hmm. if they end up winning the war, which I'm assuming means that she'll plan on killing him if they win. Which I think at this point, Cersei's character, she will kill anyone who stands in her way of anything, including Jamie at this point. I think, well, because she's kind of casting him aside specific, right in front of him by accepting that proposal. So maybe we'll see. We also see Alaria Sand get put into the dungeon with her daughter. And originally I thought that Cersei was just going to have the mountain smush both their heads or something like that. Very Oberyn-esque, but... But she mentions that was her plan that she kind of thought about at first. But she ends up poisoning Ilaria's daughter in the same way that Marcella was poisoned, and she's going to have to sit there and watch her die. So I'm not sure we'll ever come back to those characters for the rest of this show. We only have ten episodes left, and so we'll see. We also check back in at Winterfell where Sansa has been left in charge while Jon is gone. And she does well with being in charge. Mm -hmm. Like, it's something that's coming more natural to her. She has a commanding presence, which is really interesting to see. I don't know if we're going to get to see more of that. I hope so. I kind of like the side of her character. Mm -hmm. And we actually see Bran show back up at Winterfell. And it's an interesting reunion. He had, like, a complete personality change from the last time we saw him. Yeah, he was shifting a little bit. But he was more, like, cranky and angsty the last time yeah. we saw him. But in his trip through the woods after Hodor died, he has completely lost all emotion. That was one of the parts of the episode that felt a little bit rushed. His character development, because you're like, wait, how do we get here? And I guess I can accept it, but it did feel... Well, rushed. and they had the girl who was with him, which I cannot remember her name. But they spent a lot of time doing some character development with her, what was it, last season or the season before? Mm -hmm. And she just, like, stood there. <laughs> yeah, we were joking with our friend that at this point, some of these characters who got almost whole episodes devoted to them in previous seasons of the show have now been like, relegated to cameo status. They just, where like, they pop in, like, hello. Yeah, hello. they just pop in the background and be like, I'm still here and alive. And then they're out of the show, like, and they don't exist. So really, it's... Daenerys, Jon, Sansa, and Cersei is our story. Throughout this episode, I will say that the story felt a little rushed in most areas that we got to, besides maybe, like, the Dragonstone part. And I'm confused as to why they're doing that, because they shortened the season. So I assumed that it would still be, like, a normal pace. Like, more things would happen, but it wouldn't feel, like, too compacted. And right now it's starting to feel that way a little bit. I would agree, and I think there's some parts that we'll talk about later that I definitely felt like were way compacted for what, for how important they were to the story. And then the episode pops over to the Citadel where we catch up with Sam and Jorah, who is now fully healed after a single uh, night of healing. <laughs> they didn't even explain how it happened. Like, I feel like last episode they made a big deal about how it wasn't possible, and they showed Sam, like, looking at the books and figuring it out, but, like, the audience didn't get to know... How to figure out, like, we're just left there to be like, did he just peel all the skin off and it's fine? 
Yeah, that was interesting because I thought he was from the picture and stuff that he was ha he's gonna have to do something to like his heart or something. But oh. and then when we got back, it apparently was that he just carved all of the skin off. Something like that. Like we literally our first scene we see is Jorah standing there with like somewhat scarred skin. It didn't even look that scarred. I expected no. it to look way uglier. And then it's just like, hello, I'm better. Which is pretty interesting that they said it was such a complicated thing. And but if all he was doing was cutting off the infected skin, I don't feel like that's that complicated. It felt like a little <laughs> bit of a, like, here's this thing and now it's done! Like, I just... <laughs> yeah, I think it was also because Jorah's storyline, that was two full seasons of his storyline going to that moment and being, you know, diseased and having to leave Daenerys. And I feel like they wrapped it up really quickly. The last time we saw Jorah, I really expected to come like full circle with his story and go in depth with his journey for getting healed and coming back to Daenerys. And it just... So I'm really hoping his story goes someplace because this part, like other parts of this episode, felt a little bit rushed for how much build they had towards it. The conclusion of his sickness was very quick. So speaking of being rushed, let's get into the parts we thought were the most rushed things we have seen in this show, and I am not the happiest about it, and that's the two battles, if you can call them that, at the end. Yeah, there were two major battles at the end that could have been huge set pieces. The battles both at Casterly Rock and Highgarden just, like, showed the armies, like, rushing in, and I think at Casterly Rock we saw them, like, climbing the walls a little bit, but then all of a sudden it's Grey Worm at the top of a building and everyone's, like conquered and whatnot and they figure out that what they were looking for is not there and then we switch over to jamie's crew attacking high garden and it's just like and that one was probably the most egregious yeah because elena looks out and the whole army's walking but we don't even see them get to the high garden and i guess artistically it's a cool scene where the, it's like his back framed and it's like and jamie walking but and he this just, is game of thrones give me carnage give me violence give me the battles that are so cool like what so this big siege he ends up walking through and everyone's already dead the battle's already done and he just walks in and it felt a little cheap to be honest we felt a little cheated for what should have been two giant sieges that they could have spent a good chunk of this episode on and it was like the last 10 minutes of the episode for both they better have some epic battle scenes later in the season or towards the end of the season to make up for this yeah, I'm really hoping they have a Battle of the Bastards level moment yeah. because that episode just showed us when they take their time and really flesh out a big battle, how good those scenes can yeah, be. Yeah, this episode seemed like a slap in the face to Battle <laughs> of the Bastards. Like, when... A little bit, yeah, when compared side by side because two epic battles turned into, you know, a little flash forward. We did get one cool scene out of one of these battles, and that was Jamie confronting Elena Tyrell. As always, Elena is a breath of fresh air where he I walks in her. and she goes, How are you gonna kill me? Yeah, basically. You gonna chop my head off? You gonna throw me out the window? Well, no, the first thing she asked was, like, did we fight well? And like, what a classy lady. <laughs> yeah. How did we fight? Did we do well, even yeah. though everyone's dead? Yeah. <laughs> do we at least put up a fight? Do we have our honor a little? And then so she ends up drinking wine because Jamie puts poison. And I also thought that was so funny because he puts the poison in the glass and she just goes, Tunk! yeah, like shoots it and she's like, no big deal. But their conversation <laughs> and the way that her like monologue went, it was just, it was a really cool just dialogue scene. And I honestly expected Jamie to just like run her through with his sword the way mm -hmm. that she was talking, especially when she admitted to being responsible for Joffrey's Joffrey, death. Yeah. And uh, he just, like, walked away. And I was just like, man, Elena, that was a good death. That was a good death scene. Yeah, it was intense when she's just like, you know that Cersei's a monster, right? Just like her son. And you he's know. like, you don't know her like I do, basically. And I think that's also one of the saddest parts, is that Jamie had so much growth potential when he was running around with Brienne, and he's just lost all of it now. I will say, yeah, that scene was very telling of where his character is at, because up until that point, I thought he was still having his head on straight, and that kind of proved to me that, no, he's really in Cersei's grasp, and just, I think maybe he might realize that at some point, but I think he's going to be way too deep in before he does. Yeah, we'll see. I was hoping for something that was a little bit like, because he was the Kingslayer, and he killed... Aegon, that he would kind of have to do the same thing with Cersei. I was hoping that she would have, yeah, that she would have gone so dark and so monstrous that he would have been like, I have to do this again. Yeah. 
and had done, and would do it. But I don't see it going that place anymore. Yeah, and we did see earlier in the episode that she doesn't even care if people know that they're sleeping together at this point, which mm. he was a little unsettled by, but not as much as I thought he would be. So at this point, we are basically halfway through the season. We're three out of seven episodes, so we only have four left. And I have not been overly impressed by these three episodes with how much of a bang I thought they would have for only a seven-episode season. They're not awful, and they have their great moments, but episodes as a whole, I just, I don't feel super strongly, positively about. Yeah, I feel like they've been solid Game of Thrones episodes, but I feel like our expectations are so much higher because... They gave such a finite number of episodes left where they go, we only have, you know, at this point, 10 episodes left. And each episode they've given us doesn't feel like, I guess they're giving it their all to really, like, push the story forward. Or at least in this episode, when the pacing suddenly goes off and it feels like it's moving way too quick, like they're trying to cram it. It's like, well, why'd you give yourself less episodes? Yeah, so we're really hoping that it picks up as we go. I know we've said that in every recap, but we're still hoping for it. That being said, we are always so pumped to watch Game of Thrones, and like, even though we had our issues with them, we love these episodes. Well, that's it for this recap and review. What did you guys think of this episode? Do you agree with us on the pacing, or did you love the entire thing and think that we are totally wrong? Let us know in the comments below. We like discussion either way. And as always, like this video, it helps us out a lot, and subscribe to our channel. We do one of these every week for Game of Thrones, and so we want you guys to come talk to us about the episode. And if you guys want to check out some previous episodes of our Game of Thrones recaps, or some of our other videos, you guys can check them out right over there, and we'll see you on our next video. Bye!